Hello, Gary Champion, Psychic Medium. With the video, I hope that maybe helps. Here's my best. Uh, upcoming events September 12th, free readings, 2 o'clock Sunday, Central Standard Time. Uh, just log in to Gary Champion Psychic Medium YouTube site and um, be in the chat room. Submit your questions and Bunny and I'll answer them. September 19th, free healing. Usually just one person. Sometimes we've done two. And I've been doing a lot of uh, a sideline here. I've been doing some experimenting with that. And over the last, I don't know, six months, uh, healing energy works really well if you're in close contact. That's all I'm going to say. Figure that one out. September 26th, self-healing class, uh, where I teach you how to heal yourself. It's about boosting your immune system, really is what it is. Uh, boost your immune system and um, your organs generally come back online. November 7th, change your programming, change your life. Um, uh, hmm. I was talking with my wife the other day and blurted out uh, it's going to be hard for anybody to be more than a one-term president. And um, the word I keep getting is hypercritical, that um, the world is hypercritical. We're splintered into fairly strong groups of people that believe one way or another. I guess I guess beliefs are very big in the world. If you're trying to navigate, if you have a strong belief, it's easier to navigate. Doesn't mean you're right. People will pound the table and yell at you and tell you they are, but truth is, you pick a side to be on. And whatever side that is, you defend it the best way you can. Someone's mentioning, uh, okay, this is really odd. Uh, I made a statement to someone, I don't know, fairly recently that uh, soldiers in the Civil War, especially in the Southern Army, Confederate, uh, would often uh, get a sign-up fee. They would get, you know, I don't know, so many dollars. I don't know what it was. It's, but they would put on the uniform, get the gun, the shoes, and everything, and march around a while, and then dump all that and go to the Union Army and enroll, get more money, better uniform, better boots, better guns, whatever. I think the guns are virtually the same, bought them from the same place. But um, the North had better food. The South was um, cooking um, acorns. Well, they would pick up acorns off the ground and cook them and uh, make coffee out of that. In the North, they had real coffee. So, and some people made a living out of that during the Civil War. They would just go from army to army. If they didn't get killed or, or discovered and hung or shot, which is what they did to deserters, you just shuck that uniform, change your name. Back then, there weren't, wasn't any ID. You didn't pull out your driver's license. So, you were who you said you were. And... Um, some of that's going on but a very minor level, someone's saying, where the Republican Party has defectors that go to the Democratic Party. And Democrats will migrate to the Republican Party. Why? Because they're really not Democrats, they're really not Republicans. They're somewhere in the middle. Republicrats. <laughs> I just heard that in my head. Republicrats. That's what they are. They're not conservative enough to be real Republicans. And they're not liberal enough to be democratic, so they're kind of stuck in the hole there. They don't really want to be Republicans, but they're not liberal enough to be democratic. 
And again, it has to do with who's paying them. Who's paying you to be a Republican? The Republicans have a lot of money. They have super PACs. They raise tons of money, and they that money gets paid out to people to go out and get votes, for one thing. You don't think they do that? Of course they do that. I just discovered, I got a letter from uh, the county here saying that my voting record has been uh, breached. Is that the word they use? Hacked. I think that's the word they use. That now some people have gotten on computers and learned how to hack into the county voting records. And that my information is now known by people. Why? Probably to try and send me crap through the email or the mail trying to influence me to become a, a Republican or a Republocrat or a, a re Republicrat or whatever. Um, knowing names, phone numbers, and addresses. And that's all they got. That's all they wanted. So I looked for the next vote to have a bunch of crap come in the mail. He would stop by the house and knock on the door and want me to do something. Of course, no one's offered to pay me. <laughs> it's a different story altogether. Um, I can't be bought. Money's not an object. That's not why I, uh, I live. I don't live for money. I don't work for the idea of money. I work for the idea of people. But... Uh, and, and all this is spilling out from the other side. I'm not, I don't have any of this written down. What I have written down is a couple of words. Warren term presidents and hypercritical. And then a, a class I'm gonna talk about. And that's all I've got written down. So uh, this is free flowing from the other side, streaming from the other side. But uh, it's going to be hard for a president to have two terms because the world is so fractious and uh, hypercritical that a president seemingly on the news the other day, there's a big picture of him looking at his watch, you know, doing this, except it's lower. Republicans jumped on that, published it, said, look, we're talking about dead soldiers here from Afghanistan and the president's looking at his watch. It wasn't true. It turns out he it's after the ceremony. He's looking at his watch because he has another appointment. But this is the kind of uh, misinformation that's been going on since Donald Trump was president. We didn't have it very much until he was. And he just started saying fake news that's not real and people bought into it. So uh, it'd be hard for a president to be um, of course Okay, I'm hearing from the other side. You have to give me a second here. I can't do two things at once. I know you don't ask me to, but um, that's interesting. Uh, some similar stuff like this happened during Watergate where people were sent out to do dirty tricks and misinformation in order to smear somebody. I say, I say, not anybody else, I say that it makes it easier for a president to be a president in a fractious time of hypercritical people. Why? Because you can ignore all of it. What does it matter I'm looking at my watch? Okay, I'm looking at my watch. What are you going to do about it? I'm president. I'm only going to be in four years. If that were true, which it's not, because it's been all over the internet that it was widely circulated to millions of people, but not true. But I think it makes it easier, and, but, and presidents will campaign differently, kind of knowing that their time is four years. They'll come out hard with an agenda instead of maybe wait until their second minute. And you hear that all the time. I mean, he's waiting until the second uh, uh, administration to uh, offer free bubble gum to everybody who has web toes. These guys won't wait. They'll jump in the first week and begin ripping things apart and redoing things and stating clearly what their message is. Now, before, before getting elected, 
it's still going to be the same old crap of lying to get in office. But um, once they're in, I believe the gloves will come off. They'll start pitching things really quickly. And um, much more than Joe Biden or anybody else. They'll just be throwing stuff out there. Because <clears throat> they know they're limited four years. And they have a list of things they need to get done. Or that they think they need to get done. Which may or may not be true. But it makes it easier to be a president knowing you're only going to be in four years. It really doesn't matter what mistakes you make. Because the first administration is all you get. And the reason presidents are worried about making mistakes is they can't get that second four years. They can't get. And here's the thing. They don't get any more in retirement if they do four years or eight years. It's the same. I know it's a lot of money. I don't know what it is. But more than I make. So uh, those people running for president who may be, and here's the thing to understand, our real brain trust in this country, they're not running for president. They're not politicians at all. Why? Because it destroys your career. No person with a real career in anything would ever uh, run for office because you can't win. You can't win. You're not going to see any young presidents. Because they want to live another 40 years and have a career. They'll be a senator, and somewhere in their 70s, then they'll run for president. Because they fear anonymity. The world ends if you get too well known. I don't know what this is on my screen. I'm not sure what that is. Hmm. Anyway, that's the story today. One term presidents, hypercritical country. Uh, splintered I mean it's it's not it's not just um, ideological kind of stuff it's it's religious stuff it's uh, abortion stuff it's it's climate change do you believe in climate change yeah yeah I do but a whole group of people don't and they also believe the world's flat there's a certain number of people who believe the world's flat it's not round and anybody who's uh, you know you can't have a flat planet it's just not possible. They don't survive in the vacuum of space. Anyway, and everybody's screaming. Everybody's screaming at the president. Everybody's screaming at the president. Students saw, students voted for Biden because they thought they were going to get their debts uh, for college, hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, removed. You can't do that. Who's going to pay for it? They borrowed their money. They spent it going to school. Now they, don't, they want to renege. They don't want to pay tough life's tough pay pay up you borrowed it you spent it you've got the degree it doesn't matter that you now don't want to be a lawyer or a doctor or whatever you studied for you borrowed the money pay up government doesn't owe you that and a whole group of people that wanted to be a socialist country they just go out and have endless money to spend and live wherever they want that's utopia that's not the real world the real world is you got a scratch to earn Nobody gives you anything out here. Unless it's your daddy and he's rich and he can give you crap. But the real world, you have to struggle for what you are. My name will get you in the door. You can be famous. I could be a Rockefeller. And that'll get me a meeting. It will not get me time doing anything or a job. Because in the end, you have to produce. Anyway. Going on and on, aren't I? And I, I, had a, I have one more thing at the bottom here that I thought, I, I gave my self-healing class the other day, and that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And uh, uh, sort of discovered something new, but, but it's old. I've had it in the back of my mind uh, since I started this virtual stuff, and I just haven't said anything. Um, but um, at the end of these little classes that I give, I give readings. I begin reading people. I can see these little blocks. You know, you're, you're, you're on the screen in a block, or in some cases, a circle. And um, I can read virtually. I can look at a picture or a video or, or um, someone in a live screen and read them. So I begin giving little, little gallery readings. And uh, it was great fun. And um, 
thought maybe I might offer a gallery reading a Skype virtual gallery reading class where you pay your money log in and and you ask questions or I just read you because I can and reading a person saying one thing can lead to ten other things um, I've never not been able to do it so the first I can't remember my first gallery it was around 2000 I think and galleries were new. John Edward was on television doing them, but no one else had ever seen them before. I had never seen them before. I even heard of them before until I saw him do them. And the next day after I saw his first episode of his brand new PBS, I think, um, something to educate. Anyway, I called and booked a deal up in Minneapolis to go do a, a show. And they required a class. I had to give a class. wouldn't have to, but it was... It was inferred that you should and uh, I'd never done one no idea but I you know I'd walk through crowds and read people in crowds and thought well this is interesting can't use it for anything except uh, self-defense or uh, just knowing the people around you what their purpose was what their agenda is it, all that stuff's valuable but um, anyway I went up and it would it was great class I enjoy, I can still clearly remember the feeling that was how good it was so I've always been able to read people in a crowd thing is uh, psychic mediums evolve or they should be evolving if they're not evolving then they're then they're not doing it right I started out as just a reader then I decided to do gallery readings and then animal pet psychic stuff came along and then uh, uh, reading text, I'm able to do that. I can look at words on a piece of paper and know what, what's behind it. And then um, I'm not sure what was next, healing. But if you're evolving, the world never slows down for you. If you're satisfied with your little job uh, making pencils and eating a cheese sandwich for lunch, you're not evolving. You're surviving. And if that's your intent, then you're doing it really, really well. I don't have that intent. I have the intent to... Anyway, I thought perhaps I might offer a Skype gallery reading class um, and put it on my website and just read people. But also it would be a chance for other mediums who are looking for a little bit of guidance in what they're doing to ask questions about where do they go next or how do they evolve from being a reader to being a gallery reading person to being a pet psychic to being a um, and since the evolution of a medium is different in every medium uh, and I'm talking about psychics psychics is it's a catch phrase on the internet for locating people but you type in psychic you get psychic medium psychics know what you're thinking I, I've never known anybody that that went any further with just being psychic psychic medium is where you want to be that's where the action is talking to dead people has no end of fun and they find it funny too you're talking to spirits they they minor funny and they comment on everything in a funny, crazy kind of a way. So it's entertaining all the time. So you want to do it simply for the contact you have with the spirits and uh, helping people. You get a spiritual gain from that. So maybe I thought, yes, my guys are saying I'm rattling on. So uh, time to cut to the chase here. Anyway, if you have any interest in that, you know, shoot me a little thing on the on the at the at the end of this. Uh, video or there's comments make a comment you'd be interested in a class like that maybe I'll offer it because uh, we did it at the end of the uh, I guess the end of all these classes I've been giving I've been reading people I just didn't realize it was so I just thought it was a bonus thing maybe you know you get the Cracker Jacks and at the bottom you get that little whistle but my favorite were those little tattoos that you wet your arm and stick them on there and you had an anchor tattoo or whatever the tattoo was uh, so um, it's a little spice to add in at the end of a class and those classes have been going really well I've enjoyed it immensely and people are out there self-healing and 
trying to um, really save themselves, you know, boost your own immune system, change everything, try and reset the clock a little bit, get a little more time out of who you are. And maybe why I don't look like I'm as old as I am. I have no idea, but I'm told I don't look anything my age. And um, I don't feel my age. I'm not tottering around on the cane or a walker. Maybe it's a bit premature for that. So uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if you be, think a Skype gallery reading class is a good idea. If you think it stinks, say it stinks. It won't hurt my feelings any. I think my wife thinks it's a good idea. I think she may be the one who brought it up. I don't know. Last year or something, I was doing something. She said, you know, you could offer that as a class. I think that was her idea. Isn't it nice to have bunny around? You need a bunny in your life. Because I can only hear and see what I can hear and see. But someone standing right over there sees a whole other thing. They see things you don't see. As a medium, I'm goofy, and I'm not aware of real things. Uh, she orders lunch because I, I can't seem to pull that off lately. Um, I guess that's it. My guess saying it's time to wrap it up. So one-term president's hypercritical. If you're wanting to run for president in the next whatever, don't worry about the second administration. You're not going to have one. You're going to run four years as hard as you can with your nose to the ground like a bloodhound. And uh, good staff can do a lot for you. Staff's more important than you are anyway. President's just one person. Your staff makes what happens happen. Get a good staff. Run four years real hard and then bail out. Um, don't worry. Everybody's worried about that second administration. Don't don't worry about it. You're not going to get it. People are hypercritical. They're going to rip you apart in the end of four years, and you'll have to go off and uh, get a real job. <laughs> no fear, no regret, no anger. Thanks for watching.